God is good yes, all the time. God is good 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 yes, all the time. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. Well, I know I don't deserve all of his good, and I know I don't serve him just like I should. Well, there are many things not the way they should be, but I'm grateful that he keeps being good to me. I said the Lord is good to me. Trust and he'll be good to you. My father is good, yeah. Hey, God is good all the time. Well, I went in the valley one day to pray. My soul got happy and I stayed all day. You know my hand got stuck to the gospel plow. And I won't take nothing for my journey right now. Well, if you don't believe that I've been redeemed, come on and follow me now to that Jordan stream. You know I stepped in the water and the water was cold. Chill my natural body but then harm my soul. The Lord is good to me. Trust and he'll be good to you. Oh, my father is good, yeah. Hey, God is good all the time. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all of his wonderful benefits. Well, preacher ain't got no benefits. Food on your table, clothes on your back, shoes on your feet, roof over your head. You know who you are and where you are at this moment. You got a reason to bless the name of the Lord on this morning. I don't know if you read the same thing where I read where it said that we ought to come into his gates with thanksgiving and we ought to enter into his courts with praise. I know you got issues in your life, but still when you come in the house of God, you ought to come in with praise on your mind and praise on your mouth. Not worried about what anybody else is saying, not worried about what anybody else is doing, but your mind, as you say you woke up, your mind was stayed on Jesus. I need a blessing from the Lord. I need the Lord to make a way in my own life, so I got to praise the Lord while I still have a chance. So good to see all of you that are here on this morning. Um, thank all of you that are watching us via live stream on this morning. So glad. As I always say in this age of virtual cyber worship, you can stop by anywhere that you want to. But we're just always thankful that you decided to stop by and be here um, with us here at the Sweetwater Church of Christ. So good to look out in the crowd and see the Tiger Woods of uh, Duval is in the house. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. A product of this very church, my good friend and brother, Brother Chapman. So good to see him here with us today. And all of you that are visiting here with us. We just want to thank you for taking out your time to stop here and be with us and we pray that you'll be blessed by those things that are said here on today. So the only question that I have now is did anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? That was half of y'all. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? I believe you came to the right place. Let's go to the book of Philemon chapter number one. It ain't got but one chapter. I should have said six and just watched somebody flip. Philemon chapter one. And we're going to begin at verse number 10, and we're going to conclude at verse number 18. The grass withers, and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. And the Bible says, appeal to, your, to you for my son Onesimus. I became his father while I was in chains. Once he was useless to you, but now he is useful both to you and to me. I am sending him back to you. I am sending my very own heart. I wanted to keep him with me so that in my imprisonment for the gospel, he might serve me in your place. But I didn't want to do anything without your consent so that your good deed might not be without of obligation, but of your own free will. For perhaps this is why he was separated from you for a brief time so that you might get him back permanently. 
no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a dearly beloved brother, he is especially so to me, but how much more to you both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. And if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge it to my account. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want to give for our message this morning a runaway slave. A runaway slave. Philemon, the book of Philemon has no real doctrine or no real value. It does not set up the order of the church. It does not deal with deacons. It does not deal with elders. It doesn't deal with immoralities and things like that. It doesn't deal with things that have been profitable to preach. It's just a simple, quick letter written by a shaky hand, trembling hand of an old man who is resisting arthritis long enough to pen a few words because he thought it was important to stand in a position and officiate for this runaway slave. The Bible is unclear as to how a guy like Onesimus would run into Paul seeing that Paul is a prisoner. Now, I want to set this up for you a minute. You got a prisoner who is incarcerated outwardly, but he is free inwardly. I say he is incarcerated outwardly, but he is free inwardly, writing to a slave owner, trying to get a slave owner to receive a runaway slave. Each man is in some way, whether you know it or not, incarcerated this morning. In some way liberated. Paul is bound on the outside, but he feels free on the inside. And he's writing to Philemon to say, Onesimus, by all rights, he is your slave. You paid for him. He is your property. You paid the price for him. He didn't treat you good. He didn't serve out his time. He ran away, but I want you to receive him back. Because he ran away from you, but while running away from you, he ran into me. And, and in the process of him running into me, I was able to convert him. And Onesimus, who was your slave, is now my son. Now, Philemon, the, this puts you in a dilemma because if Onesimus is my son, then he is your brother. And if he is your brother, then he can't be your slave. I said, Onesimus is my son that would make him your brother. And if he is your brother, then he cannot be your slave. Tell somebody, Onesimus is a runaway slave. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know what it is to be a runaway slave. You're running away from something and can't deal with it anymore. And you might not admit it, but all of us in here this morning are running away from something right now. Whether it's on your job, you're running away from something. In your house, you're running away from something. All of us this very moment are running away. Don't get all ethnic and high polluted on me right now. All of us are running away from something. You don't have to be black to be a runaway slave. Anytime you're running away from how you have been defined, anytime you're running away from how folks saw you, anytime you're running away from the limited perspective people had over your life, anytime you refuse to be bound, anytime you got to get up from that trap, you've been a runaway slave and you have been on the run. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Somebody right here running right now. Yeah. Running from the limited view of the way that people see you. Running from your past, running from your background, running from who you used to be, yeah. running from what people say about you. Somebody on the run. Yeah. And Onesimus was a runaway slave. Mm -hmm. And he ran up on Paul and he got liberated. Mm -hmm. And now he is liberated on the inside, but he's still on the run on the inside. And if you're a runaway slave, you live in danger of being destroyed. Paul, who can't get out of prison is writing a letter so that somebody who is out can be free. Yeah. Amen. I said Paul, yeah, yeah. who is in prison yeah. and cannot get himself out, yeah. is writing a letter for somebody on the outside yes. so that he can be free. Some theologians suggest 
that the book of Philemon is only included in the canonical scriptures because the book of Philemon became a work that Onesimus includes because Onesimus becomes a penman for the apostle Paul and becomes useful to the apostle. And others suggest that it goes even deeper than that, that Philemon becomes an apostle and does great work. And Onesimus ends up doing Timothy's old work there and he becomes a great use to the local work that was going on at that time. Now, I want you to understand this morning that it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. I say it does not matter where you start, but it matters all about where you finish. You might not have had a real good start, but that don't mean you can't have a happy ending. That's why, that's what I love about this good old story is that it always has a happy ending. I want to talk to somebody this morning who may have had a rough start in life, but you are expecting a happy ending. I want to send you a love letter called for later. You didn't start out well, things weren't going well, but you're believing God for a happy ending. He that hath begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want to send you this letter. Tell somebody you've been running for too long. You've been running for too long. You're going to miss out on opportunities in front of you running from the pain that is behind you. I said you can miss out on opportunities in front of you running from the pain and the things that are behind you. And Paul said, I'm writing this letter so Onesimus ain't got to run no more. Yeah. I'm writing this so he does not have to run. Onesimus, God has a plan for your life. Onesimus, God did not intend for you to be in Philemon's life, not as a slave, but as his brother, so that you can be of use in the kingdom of God. Yeah. And, and the thing about love, church, is when you love two people who don't like each other, it puts you in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to the people over here. Yes, I said when you love two people yes. that don't like each other, yes. it puts you in an uncomfortable situation. I'm getting your business here in a minute. I'll be there in just a minute. Every, every man who's ever stood between your mama and your wife, you understand what it's like to be poor because you love mama and you love him. But Helen and Mama can't stand each other. I lost half of the church right there, Jesus. Yeah, yeah you, you thought you was Onesimus, but when you got home, you have to act like Paul and say, Mama, you know how Helen is. Then you got to tell Helen, you know how my mama is. It's hard when you're stuck. They're looking at this from the perspective, I want to give you a couple points about this love thing. Love will always work as an arbitrator. Yeah, uh -huh. come on. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah, So you see, in the letter that Paul writes, he works as an arbitrator. Yes. Mm -hmm. Arbitrating between two opposing sides. Yeah. And, and love also, I want you to get this, is a peacemaker. Yeah. Yeah. It stands on the hedge. Yeah. It makes up the gap. And the second thing I want to tell you about love is that love is a transformer. Yes. It will allow you to change. Love will allow you to grow up. Yes. Love will allow you to be a servant, but still embrace you as a son. Yes. You will remember when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, they left Egypt like runaway slaves, yes. running from Pharaoh that was in hot pursuit of them, ready to destroy them. They came down to the Red Sea. They heard their master chasing them and began to murmur, complaining about Moses. How dare you bring us out here in the wilderness to die this way because slaves on the run live in fear. Yeah. Yeah. And they thought that their master was going to overtake them, but the master of masters waves his power, open up the Red Sea, and the slaves were able to go across on dry ground. They stepped into the Red Sea as slaves, but by the time they walked through the Red Sea and came on the other side, they were sunk. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Paul would later call the baptism between the cloud and the sea. Yeah. Baptism is when you go down one way, but you come up another way. I, I don't know who's been baptized in here, but I, it'll take you down as a slave and bring you up as a child of God. Come on. And then you know who you really got if they can't receive. 
receive the new you. Love is transformed. Yeah. If you really love me, you won't just love the old me, you'll love the new me. Yeah. There are some people in here right now that are going through a transformation. Tell somebody how you like the new me. That's gotta, that's gotta determine how we make it over the next few years, how we make it in a partnership, how we make it in a friendship in life. If every time we get into a conversation, you are always pointing me back to my faults and to my failures, who I was and what I did. Apparently, you cannot accept the new me. I need somebody that can get over the hill. I need somebody that can forget. Like the Apostle Paul said, those things that are behind, look forward to those things that are ahead. It's behind us for a reason. It happened, it's over, it's done away with. You cannot change it. There's nothing that you can do about it. The only thing that you can do is press on. Amen. Now, Paul writes his letter to an abolitionist, to be an abolitionist. An abolitionist, we know, is one that fights for the freedom of slaves. And he writes his letter as an emancipation proclamation for Onesimus. And he says, perhaps he left you. This is my favorite line. He says, perhaps he left you for a season that he might be with you forever. Sometimes you gotta leave so you can come back down. I said, sometimes you got to leave so that you are able to come back then, I wish I had somebody who understood the depth of what I just said to you. Yeah, I had to come away from you because when we were together, it was toxic and it was not working. I had to get away and get myself together. I had to stop worrying so much about you and begin to worry about myself so that I can get myself in line with God. Now I can help you because I've helped myself. Because I'm operating from a position of strength. Now see, the real challenge is to transform your understanding. That's the real challenge in life. To transform your understanding. Pharaoh couldn't do it. That's why God drowned him in the Red Sea. Because he was not able to do it. Because Pharaoh could only see the Hebrews as slaves. And because he couldn't see them as sons, God used the same water that liberated the slaves to drown Pharaoh and his army. Come on now. It wasn't the slavery that was a problem. It was his inability to flow into what God was getting ready to do in their life. And let me tell you, sometimes when you want to press forward and you want to do the things of God, everybody ain't going to like it. Everybody is not going to encourage you. Everybody's not going to try to build you up. But at the end of the day, as long as as you know that God is looking down from heaven, pleased with the things that you are doing, child of God, you are right. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. So it wasn't the slavery that was the problem. It was his inability to see what God was doing. It's not what we did yesterday that's messing us up. It's that you won't grow with what you're going through. Some of us just going through. Some of us growing through what we're going through. That's it. That's it. To you, I'm going to say that again. Some of us are just going through stuff. And then there are other of us that are growing through the things that we're going through this life. If you can't grow with me, you can't go with me. And if you can't go with me, trying to follow behind me, you're going to drown yourself. Trying to follow me the way I'm trying to go. Yeah, but the only thing standing between Onesimus and death was a letter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. written by a prisoner. Mm -hmm. An old man laying on a cold floor in a prison, in a cave, right. saying, take my word for it. Take my word. Yeah. Onesimus is family now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Onesimus is a child of God now. Take my word for it. He, he said, the boy is all right. All the boy right. is good. I started to keep him for myself, but he ain't my slave, so I'm sending him back to you. He said, but when I thought about you, I thought I would give you the first chance to embrace this new Onesimus. Because just be real about it. Had Onesimus just went back without Paul writing his letter? Yes, sir. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he just went back on his home, trying to say, oh, well, you know, I'm 
I'm sorry, I ran away. You're going to be like, come on, you're going to get it chopped off. You're not, not going to be able to run anywhere else. That's why the Apostle Paul had to write this letter back. I know that he is your slave. I know that he has done wrong. I know that he has ran away. But I want you to receive him with the spirit of love. I do not want you to be angry with him, but I want you to receive him. Isn't that just like us sometimes when we get on the wrong side of God, when we get outside of the track that we want God to receive us, but we can't be the same way with other people. We want to hold stuff over your head. We don't never I don't want to let you forget it. You'll never be able to live it down. But then we come before God. We can't expect God to just wipe it clean. Forget about it. It's over with. It's done with. But then when it comes time for us to use that same ability with other people, we find it hard to do that. Yes. Yes. Never made this thing. Now, he said, and if you're going to hold charges against him, through something he did in the past. He said, he can't pay me, but I can. He may not be able to pay you, but I can. And if he owes you anything, charge it on my account. Can I put it on your account? <laughs> now, when, when, when you read charge to my account, all of a sudden, I understood why Philemon is included in the Bible. Because here Paul is a shadow of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. He said, you know Peterson is a runaway slave and he messed up some stuff that he doesn't have the power to make right. But if he owes you anything, yeah. charge the my account. So, so, so since I started to investigate it, I said, this sounds so much like Jesus. I said, and there's some synergy between this runaway slave and this abolitionist who wrote the letter to liberate this captivated, this captivated soul of Onesimus. And he said, where have I seen this before? Well, John jumped in and said, move for later. And he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And he ran down and said, and the Word was made flesh, and said, and the Word was made flesh, the letter was made flesh. This is Jesus. Yes. Now you understand who Jesus yes. is. Jesus is God's love letter to you. Come on now. Amen. He is our abolitionist. Thank you, Lord. He is our liberator. He is the one that has come to set us free. It took him 42 generations to write it. It took us 33 years to read it. And I started thinking about God for the Roman soldier who had an envelope open. These people were not aware of who they were dealing with. This was God's answer to the problems of mankind. He sent us a love letter wrapped up in human flesh, a man by the name of Jesus Christ. If you ever get sick, you got God's medicine cabinet wrapped up in flesh. His name is Jesus. If you're ever stressed out and you need peace, he is a peace that surpasses all understanding. If you reach a place in life where you feel like you can't make it over, he is a bridge over troubled water. If you feel like you're stressed out, depressed and rejected in life. He is the one that is able to reach down, pick you up, place your feet on solid ground, establish your Lord. He is able. Yes. Come on. Yes. The Bible says that when Jesus went on the cross, See, I, I, see I, I, I didn't know about this love that he had for me. I wasn't, I wasn't so much aware of the love that he had for me because I was looking at the envelope and I couldn't see the letter for the envelope. Lord have mercy. I couldn't see, I couldn't really see what God was trying to do. I couldn't really see his plan. They opened up the letter. They started the New Testament. They liberated our life. They set us free to God be the glory. Now the only thing that is standing between Onesimus and his death is if this man is going to be able to have a heart after God. Is this man going to listen to what the apostle has said? Yeah. Or is he just going to be his old self and do what he would do with any normal slave? The letter going to soften his heart. So Paul, while he's locked up, isn't it something that you're locked up and yet you're still thinking about other people? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the church. I would have been using a little strength I had to write, hey, Pope, somebody, hey, I need you to call, hey. 
<laughs> Come on now. Much as I done did, much as I, much revelations I gave y'all, I need you to do something. Commute myself. Trump, give me a part and do something. You part, you part Lil Wayne and Kodak Black. I know you can part me. Come on, somebody. Commute my sentence. Help a brother out. But this is a common pattern with the Apostle Paul. Out of all the times that he was in prison, whether he was in Ephesus, whether he was in Rome, no matter where he was, he was always thinking about the betterment of his brothers and sisters. All the times he's in chain, never focusing on his condition, knowing that any time his life can be taken, not knowing whether he was going to be released or not. But let me tell you, when you got a call on your life and you know what God has put you here to do, when you got a mission by God, and you can be in prison, you can be locked up, you've been bound up, you're going to still do what you got to do to make sure that God is pleased with you. Paul said, you know what? I'm no longer living for myself. I'm living for God. And if God put me here in this prison, man, I know there must be something that's going to come out of this. There's something, and he didn't even know. He's still blessing us here today. He's still giving us strength and encouragement here today because he did not give up, because he did not allow his circumstances to keep him bound and to keep him down. But he did the work of the Lord. Amen. The Roman, he did the work of the Lord. On the run for his life. Could you imagine what kind of fear was going through Onesimus? Man, I, I'm sure they probably had letters posted up, runaway slave, $200 reward. Hey, we got a reward for him. Knowing that you're on the run, and if anybody's to see you, 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 you just about know what's going to happen to you if you get back. And while you're on the run, you have just the opportunity to run into the apostle Paul. Can you see God's hand at work in the situation? What are the chances that he will run into the apostle Paul while he was in prison? And now he is able not only to have his soul saved, but you can go back home and you're not going to have to pay the penalty of what you've done. Child of God, you can come back home. You can come back home. And your status is elevated. You can come back home. And guess what? He will not hold those things against you. I know that you did wrong. I know that you ran away. I know that you got on the wrong side of the track. But you can come back. Just like the prodigal son. I know that you've been out there. I know that you wasted all of your money on rides and living. You've done everything that you wanted to do. How that you wanted to do it. But now that you've come to yourself. Yeah. Come on back home. Yeah. Come on back home. Come on back home. Everybody ain't gonna be happy that you came back home. You know you got a brother over there. You know what? I've been here all the time, Daddy. I've been looking at you all the time. I ain't never left you. Why? You ain't never killed no fatty cat for me. Why? You ain't never brought no ring out for me. Why? You ain't never brought no robe out for me. Stop getting mad when God is moving and doing stuff in somebody else's life. Stop getting mad when other folk getting blessed and things are going on. If He's doing something for you, it lets me know that it's still in the miracle working business. And if I live right and be faithful, God gonna do something for me as well. Only run for his life. But he runs into safety. He runs into salvation while he's running away. What you'd have ran into since you've been running? Trouble. Disappointment. More trouble. Pain. All of these things that you're running to. Jonah, you can only run for so long. Yeah. Jonah, you think you're getting away. I'll let you sail out on the ship. Make the ship break down. Swallow you up by a fish. Let you spend three days in the Holiday Inn in the fish guts. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Allow him to spit you back up on dry ground. Then give you sense enough to take yourself back home and do what it was that I was telling you to do in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. What you running for? Where are you going at the end of it? You're going to do it one way or another. You're going to do what God has called for you to do. Why are we wasting time trying to run? Hide. Thank God they're going to see you. There's an all-seeing eye watching you. 
Every step that you make, this great eye, he is awake. There's an all seeing eye, and he's watching you. Everywhere that you go, every step that you make, every breath that you take, there's an all seeing eye, yes, and he's watching you. God know where you've been. Yes, know what you've been involved in. He knows all the things that you've said, yeah. all the things that you thought to say. Yes, you say God yeah. knows. You know your faults are two weeks away and God still know what you're going to find. Yeah. That before you can ever get a thought, thought up in your mind, God already knows what you're going to find. Yeah. He knows everything about you. So what you running for? Get it? God's way is not hard. We just find it hard to be obedient. God's way is not hard. We just find it hard to be faithful. Let anything come up. Well, you know what? I ain't going to make it today. I catch him next first Sunday. You know? Let something come up. We do this. We got excuses for everything. We don't have an excuse good enough as to why we can't be committed to God. Yeah. Why we can't stick and stay with God. Why we can't be faithful. Why we always on the run. The devil throw a little thing out here, we run into it. Yeah. Yeah. He throws something over here, we run, run into, into it. it. Yeah. Every time you run into it, it lets you down. It leaves you, it leave you groaning, it leaves you complaining. Why not just stay with God? Amen. And if you stay with God, church, let me tell you, you're gonna end up where you wanna go. Amen. Now, the road, may not always be as smoothly paved as you There will be bumps in the road. There will be potholes that make you have to go get you a front end alignment. You know, there will be, there will be things that come up in this life. But our God is greater, church. Our God is able. The Bible says that he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all the things that you can even ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God is more than able. Whatever you're running from, you feel like you can't get away from it. God is more than able. Yeah. You feel like it got such a hold on you that you can't let it go. God is more than able. Yeah. And the very moment that you for once in your life truly take that issue to God, give it to God and let him have it, God can do more with it than you can. Yeah. Stop trying to run and do it by yourself. Give yeah. God an opportunity to work and to move in your life. And watch him prove himself to be mighty. He is able, church. He's able. Brought you through a, a year that you didn't think you'd get through. And now the first month of a new year and already gone. Guess what? He's keeping you. He's keeping you. God got his hands on you. You know why you weren't included in the one that's gone? Because God still got some work for you to do. Still got a plan for your life. Still got a purpose for your life. So don't just sit around and wait on Jesus to come back. Yeah. Get busy. Amen. Do some work. Get active in the body of Christ. You may not be able to preach. May not be able to sing. But you can smile at somebody. Amen. May not be able to do other things that other people can do. But guess what? You can do what you can. Everybody ain't called to be a finger. Everybody ain't called to be a foot. Everybody ain't called to be an ear or a nose. But wherever you're called to be, you be what God has called you to be. Be the best that you can be where God has called you to be. And the work of the church and the kingdom of God, it will go forward. When we all are working collectively. And realizing that, man, you know what? We've all been running from something. Trying to get away from it. Some folk been running longer than others. But let me tell you, when you give that thing to God, when you say, you know what, I'm going to stop running from this thing. I'm going to face it head up. I'm not going to worry about this. I'm going to give this issue to God and let him take care of it. Why are you worrying about stuff that you can't change anyway? A crowd about stuff that happened 10 years ago. You ain't got no time machine. Give it to God. Let him handle it. Because he can do more with it than you can, church. No need to run because you can't hide. No need to run. Come to Jesus. If you've been on the run, you need to come to him. If you've gotten away from him, you need to come to him. Jesus said, oh, he said, I stand at the door and knock. 
He said, if you would, but come and open the door. He said, I want to come in. I want to sup with you. I want to come in. I want to make my abode with you. In other words, I want to come in. I want to have fellowship with you, if you will allow. But guess what? You got to, first of all, let him in. God ain't kicking your door down. God ain't begging you to accept nothing. He said, whosoever will, let him come. Come from the loathsome way of sin and let him hide you in the blood of Jesus. My brother, my sister, my friend, life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while and it soon vanishes away. As I say often, do you recognize that at this moment, you're closer to your life's end than you were when you woke up this morning? So that since we know not the day nor the hour, when the Son of Man shall appear, since we don't know what the next moment, what the next hour, what the next day is going to hold, why not hold on to the hands of that one that holds tomorrow, the one that knows what is going to happen? Why not put your faith in Jesus? Maybe you're here and you don't yet know the Lord is your Savior. You've not yet been baptized for the remission of your sin. You're not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. You come by hearing the word. What is the word? The gospel. What is the gospel? That he lived, that he died, and on the third day he rose again with all power in his hand. You hear that. You believe the same. He said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. After belief, you repent of your sins. What is repentance? It's a change, mental change in the mind that produces a change in your action. And after repentance, you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue, and that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. And after that, you're willing to be baptized for the remission of your sin, have your sins washed away, done away with, never coming before you in this life, neither the life that is to come, and the Lord himself will add you to his body, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Maybe you're here today, you're already a Christian, but you say, hey man, I'm standing in the need of prayer. The Bible still says that the prayers of the righteous, they avail as much. My brother, my sister, my friend, if you're here today and you're subject to the invitation, don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. While the blood is still running warm in your veins, why not go and come to Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation? In my